Hey, Ken here from Homebrew Audio. I put up a blog post yesterday about audio quality, and what it was was a comparison between two sound samples. They were both voiceovers. One of them was made with a $5 mic going directly into the sound card of a regular computer. One of these little plastic jobs. The other audio was made with a microphone that looks something like this going through a computer interface box that looks something like this. $300, approximately $200. So that second sound sample was a $500 microphone and interface setup. The other one was $5, 500 times more expensive. So would you expect the audio to be 500 times as good? Okay, maybe not. But why am I doing this in the first place? First of all, it's cool. Uh, test yourself. See if you can determine which one was recorded on the expensive setup and which one was recorded on the cheap one. Now, even if you can't tell the difference, that's pretty significant right there. You can't tell the difference between $500 microphone and $5 microphone. What if the one you choose as sounding better was the $5 setup? Some of you will. It's true. I poo you not. The point here is that gear cost should not determine in your mind the ability to produce audio quality. Now am I saying you shouldn't buy expensive or higher end gear? Not at all. What I'm saying is it is quite possible and very common for people who own very expensive high end gear to make really crappy recordings that sound like they were made on $5 setups. And that's because they really don't know kind of what they're doing with the uh, with the, the audio setup that they have. So they don't really have the knowledge to be able to take advantage of a $500 or a $1,000 microphone setup. So if you do have the knowledge, however, you can make a $5 setup sound much better than uh, you would think a $5 setup would, would sound. I had to go to some really extreme measures to make this sound good, or to make it sound halfway decent. And those measures include things like preventing as much noise as possible from getting into the computer in the first place using a pop screen, but holding it at the right angle. And then once it was actually in the computer, once it was actually recorded, then I had to go through some extreme measures with some of the noise control tools in some of the sound editing software. Uh, noise reduction, gating, that kind of thing, in order to make it sound good. It took a long time to get any halfway decent quality audio out of that. The lower end gear, the cheaper gear, um, will take a lot more effort and a lot more of your time to get better quality audio, and that assumes that you have some background in audio and you know what you're doing. So the whole point here is basically this. Know what kind of quality audio you need and then find out what gear and what knowledge combination you will need to get that audio. And get rid of the prejudice that it takes expensive gear to make good quality audio. That's my point. That's all I'm trying to say. So all you haters out there, I know you're going to say, you're just trying to make everybody feel like they can make good quality audio with crappy gear and they're just going to put out crappy audio. No! My goal in life is to teach people how to make better audio, not crappy audio and pump it out there into the marketplace. So until the next time I decide to point a camera at my face, take care of yourself and happy recording.